With so much attention being paid to correct staining technique, we can sometimes overlook the need to have our microscope set up correctly. So whether it's a student microscope or something a bit more sophisticated like this multi-header, optimal viewing of our specimen is achieved in bright field optics using Kohler illumination. So what do we need to ensure this is set up correctly? Well, we need a condenser, obviously, and ideally we should have control over the aperture and the centering using centering screws, as well as being able to adjust the height. It's also ideal to be able to adjust the field aperture, but if that's not possible, we can get pretty close using either a sharp pen or a pencil. To see how these different elements are used, let's begin by looking at this image of a side-on view of the microscope. To begin, we place a specimen onto the stage and bring it into focus, and that's essential as the starting point. We then fully close down the field aperture, if able to do so, to produce a small circle of bright light. We then focus the edges of that circle by adjusting the condenser height adjustment knob in this case hidden from view on the left hand side. We then center the circle of light using the condenser centering screws if present, before finally reopening the field aperture diaphragm until it's just outside of the field of view. We then remove one of the eyepieces and looking down the open barrel, we adjust the height of the aperture on the condenser until it just fills the inside of the barrel. Having done that, we should then produce a column of light as shown here, which is both centered and focused on the specimen. Okay, so let's look at some actual microscopes here that we've got in the lab. The first is the Olympus CH20, which is our standard microscope that we use while staining. We have a look underneath here. It's a little bit limited. There's no centering screws for the condenser, but we do have control over the aperture. So that can be adjusted for each lens. And we've got control over the condenser height, but there's no control over the field aperture. So in order to focus the condenser, what we can do is place a sharp object, such as a pen or a pencil, and by focusing on that image, it gives us similar results. Here is our standard student microscope that you'll use for viewing slides. Again, we've got control over focusing and stage. If we have a look underneath here, it's a little bit more complex than the CH20, beginning with this lever that we've got here that provides control over the condenser aperture. Just to confirm that, if you look up top here, you can see how by opening and closing, that's allowing a different width of light to come through. And there's even some numbers there, so that if you're keen, you could write down the number that corresponds to the lens that you're using. We've got control over the condenser height, which is obviously essential for focusing. And to help with focusing, um, we can center it using these centering screws, as well as having control over the field aperture, which is a bit tough. The oil seems to have just seized up a little bit there. There we go. So you can see how the aperture can be closed down. And it's that closed ring structure that you would focus on with the height adjustment. Now switching to the Olympus BX41, this is not available to students, but would be available to one of the teaching staff. There's actually two height adjustment knobs left and right for the condenser. We've got the aperture control here, again with some numbers, which you could record to save a bit of time corresponding to each lens. We've got these centering screws for centering the condenser and we've got control over the field aperture. And then finally, moving to the Nikon Eclipse 80i microscope. This is the one attached to our multi-header. Again, we've got the usual control over stage and focus. If 
we now have a look underneath and we can see we've got some centering screws for the condenser got the condenser height adjustment we've got a lever once again for controlling the aperture of the condenser doesn't appear to be any field diaphragm aperture adjustment there but down on the side here we've got a dial for producing the same result okay now so let's put all that together and see how that works by um, using the multi-header so we begin by placing the slide onto the stage this is a section of lung tissue stained for elastin using the orsine method with a kind of an unusual counter stain combination here just to bring up the contrast of those elastin fibers so we bring in this case the section into focus using the 40 times objective lens so I've done that without bothering to adjust for coal illumination on all the other objectives because my intention here is to just use the 40 so I close down the field aperture you can see the, the ring of light that's produced and then by adjusting the focus by using the condenser height adjustment you keep on moving that until you get that as sharp as possible and then reopen to just field, fill the um, field of light just close that down again now so you can see the edges once more to assist with centering and then it reopen that once again until it's just outside of the field of view then we remove the eyepiece and I'm not actually filming to show you that but as I'm looking down there I'm now adjusting the aperture on the condenser until the barrel that I'm looking down is just completely filled with light so let's do that same procedure again but this time what we will do is we'll do it separately for each lens so we'll begin with the 10x and I've intentionally moved the condenser um, height way out of alignment so hopefully you'll see a little bit of an effect on on the image this looks quite glassy or gritty as you can see then if we close down the field diaphragm and now you can see just how far out the condenser is so focus on that ring of light and then center it using the centering screws and then reopen the field diaphragm you can hopefully see now that's starting to look like a cleaner image than what we had before take out the eyepiece looking down there now adjust the aperture on the condenser to the appropriate level and you can see how now that looks like a much more clearer less glassy image than what we started with okay now having done that for the 10x we shouldn't need to have too much adjustment for the other lenses but if you were going to take a photograph of a particular area for publication purposes or other other intended applications you really should make this type of adjustment each time you move from one lens to the next so here we are centering having focused on the condenser reopen the field aperture until it's just outside the field of view that looks about right and then just bring that little arterial there into focus take out the eyepiece adjust the aperture on the condenser till it's just filling the inside barrel and then refocus so it's difficult to get a clear representation of that on the camera but it certainly does look clearer down the eyepieces then finally going to the 40x objective lens that already looks pretty good you can clearly see the elastin fibers there but let's go through the same procedure once again close down the field aperture just move it to one side so you can see the edges 
that already looks pretty good so we'll just center it using the centering screws reopen after focusing on those alveoli it's about right let's check that height adjustment again looks pretty good and then just reopen the field aperture until it's just outside the field of view finally remove the eyepiece look down the open barrel and then adjust the aperture on the condenser you can see what a big difference it makes when it's too far one way or the other but when it's adjusted to just feel the inside of the barrel that should give you optimal illumination of your specimen and then coming back here to our artery again and bringing that into focus okay so that's how things work in principle if you have access to full control over your field aperture as well as your condenser but what if we look at a situation here where we assume that there is no field aperture control we need some point of focus in order to achieve the correct height of our condenser now this is way out of alignment so I'll just bring that up a little bit so as demonstrated earlier using a pen but if we use a sharp pencil in this case if you place the tip of that pencil and you need to ideally put that tip as close as possible to the glass in order to get a similar result to focusing on the field aperture there we go and then just bring the condenser into focus such that that tip of the pencil is as clear as possible and it's a little bit fiddly but it gives you something that is close to the same effect as focusing on the field aperture